are two presentations by Bishop Murray Chatlin and Sister Eileen Schuller have focused upon the wonder of the sacred scriptures and their transformative power in our lives. What comes to the fore in each presentation is the personal engagement of the speaker with the Word of God. Right away this signals a distinctive feature of the scriptures. The Word of God is not to be simply read, it is to be encountered. It is not an inanimate script on a page. It is a living word that engages us. And if our hearts are truly open, changes us. Reading scripture is an event. Something happens because it is a living word that penetrates to the heart. In the final analysis, it is an encounter with God who has chosen to speak to us in his word. From this starting point, we can appreciate the points made by our presenters. For the purpose of this brief reflective summary, I highlight just three. The first was made by Bishop Chatlin, who said that all discipleship begins with listening. Discipleship is a response to God who takes the initiative in our lives. God calls, we listen and respond. Precisely here do we encounter a significant challenge for the people of our day. Listening demands attention and focus, yet we live in a time of multiple messages amid a myriad of distractions. Even more, our modern tendency is to listen first to our own desires before we listen to others. From this arise some important questions for us. What kind of a listener am I? Does my day begin with listening or planning? And if I do listen to anyone, to whom? Popular opinion? And what am I reading? Which websites do I consult? Who or what do I allow to shape my ways of thinking and patterns of behavior? The Christian listens first to God and allows his word to transform and shape his or her life. In the light of God's word, we assess and critique all the other messages with which we are bombarded. It should never be the reverse. To underline just how important this point of listening is, think of the encounter between Jesus and his disciples at the time of his Bread of Life discourse. When many started to abandon Jesus, he asked his followers if they too would leave him. Speaking for the others, St. Peter said, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of everlasting life. The words of everlasting life. God has spoken to us in his son Jesus, who therefore speaks the words that lead to life without end. Why therefore would we want to listen to anyone else? How could we? For our second point of reflection, I turn to Sister Eileen. She spoke about her studies of the sacred word and of many other disciplines, such as languages and ancient cultures, that supported her knowledge and understanding of the Bible. I want to draw your attention to her statement that through her studies, she fell in love. She spoke specifically about falling in love with Greek and Hebrew and the ancient world, but what is clear from her presentation is a deeper love, a falling in love with the word of God, with sacred scripture, such love has obviously animated her life. This is a very important point of reflection for us. Can we say that we have fallen in love with the Word of God? Instinctively, we know that this is very different from falling in love with a good book, a wonderful work of literature. Falling in love with the Word of God is falling in love with a person. God's Word is a living Word. It is living and active, the letter to the Hebrews tells us sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Meeting the Word of God is an encounter with its author, Jesus, who is the Word of God made flesh. His Word to us is the vehicle through which he communicates his love and mercy and thus transforms our lives. In the same way that we want and need to spend time in the presence of one we love, and in the same way that we grow in our knowledge and love of the person with whom we share time, Christians want and need to spend time with God's Word. 
does not have to be 40 years of full-time study, as has been Sister Eileen's great blessing, but it does mean finding time, even a few moments each day, to read a few pages of the Gospel or one of the readings for the Mass of the day, meditating upon them and asking the Lord to speak to us through them, so that in this spending of focused time, we grow in our love for the Word of God, experience it changing our hearts, and thus grow in our knowledge and love of the one who speaks it, Jesus our Lord. Have I fallen in love with the Word of God? The final point of reflection flows from the first two. To listen to the Word of God and to grow in our love for Jesus, we need a contemplative heart, a heart that is silent, meditative, and disposed to accept whatever word God chooses to speak. I do not need to tell you how enormous a challenge that is in contemporary Western society. Ours is a culture of noise, of chatter, of babble. Not many opportunities for silent, contemplative listening are afforded us. This means that each of us needs to be deliberate about making choices that create opportunities for silence. Turning off the TV or radio or MP3 player, going for a walk alone, getting up early before the busyness of the day begins, and so on. Yet that alone is not enough. When we do create spaces for quiet contemplation, we instantly find that our minds are very noisy with distractions and anxieties. Here we deliberately choose to ask God for the gift of a contemplative heart. We ask him to make us still, ready and able to receive his word. This grace of a contemplative attitude then actually carries us through the day. A heart that receives God's word in sacred scripture is a heart alert to the signs of God's abiding presence in all the circumstances of our lives. From this arises the question, as I make plans, what place and space do I make for quiet contemplation of the Word of God? The ancient psalmist proclaimed that the Word of God is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. This Word, spoken in Jesus, leads to everlasting life. Therefore, it must find a central place in our Christian lives. May the Holy Spirit help each of us to follow the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who listened to God's word with a deeply contemplative heart and who embraced that word with ineffable love.